Hi. Centon. Hi. Centon friends. When I came to the Qinghuai Lecture Hall in the Xu Fu Cheng building, residence, it was 2018. I gave a talk I have forgotten. But I showed you my latest book, Art is More. Look it, maybe you remember. I would come back, so was my plan, when the Chinese translation of the book would be ready. It came out in 2019. Look, here it is. You see? But I didn't come back to Wuxi. Five years went by. What happens in five years? 750 years ago, it took five years for a young man, a teenager, to travel from Europe to China. The voyage was possible because the Mongols reigned over Asia. 10,000 miles of roads were safe thanks to them. The greatest of the Mongols was Kublai. He conquered China and founded the Yuan dynasty. You all know that. One day, two merchants from Venice, two brothers, men of great courage, came to his court in Sanadu, then the capital of China. They spoke to him about Venice, about Rome and Constantinople. And they spoke of Christianity. Kublai listened with an eager ear. He imagined himself already to be the king of Christendom too. He asked the two merchants to go back to Rome and come with a hundred Christian priests. Ten years later, ten years later, the two merchants came back to Sanadu without priests, but with Marco, the son of one and the nephew of the other, Marco Polo. Old Kublai, the Khan, the greatest king of the earth, and the young merchant from Venice, they liked each other. They understood each other. And Kublai entrusted this young man with honorable missions. During several years, he made him, Kublai, made Marco his personal envoy to the province of Hangzhou. As such, Marco must have come to Wuxi many times. With its many waterways, it made him think of Venice. And maybe thanks to him, the city of Wuxi became a prefecture independent from Changzhou. But how different from Italy China was? How different the art and architecture? Marco admired China. 
How did he understand everything? Back in Europe, he spread the fame of China and the country became the dream of all Westerners. How different from Europe China is still today. How different its history, its art. I admire China without boundaries. But what do I really understand? I must study very hard. And I think there must be Chinese young men, young women, who would like to make the voyage to Europe to see its art and architecture. What would they understand? Only if people understand each other, they will make peace, not war. For these young men and women, I have written in these five years another book. One that explains Christian art to those who have not grown up in a Christian culture. I hope it will come out one day in China. And then I will come to Wuxi to talk about it. Until then, goodbye.